Okay, good morning students. This is Monday, May the 4th. Uh, you should have picked up a paper packet. Uh, I've got some papers in there. Some of them are just like little art project type of things. The only one I really want you to focus on is the one that's talking about the vacation budget. Now 5.10 had us create budgets. And the whole purpose of creating a budget is to make sure we don't spend more money than what we should be spending for a vacation. How much money do we need to raise to go on this vacation? Uh, how can I spend that money? Well, I'm going to be using the computer, and you need to be using the computer. Now, if we were doing this in class, I would be giving, giving us an entire week for this. So don't just put down a whole bunch of numbers and turn it in and say, I'm finished. Uh, this should take you some research. It's going to take a while to figure out. And there's uh, some websites that I'm going to be using to help plan my vacation. I'm going to be using the Google Maps website that you see my cursor pointing at. I'm going to be using Expedia for flights, Booking.com for hotels, and if you want to take the bus instead of uh, driving, here's some Greyhound information. Now I have been on Greyhound. I don't think I'd want to take a long trip on it again. One time I took a Greyhound from Childress to Boston. And once I got to Boston I you know, went to go look at the Old North Church and the, the site of the Boston Tea Party and the Freedom Trail and uh, took a little tour of Paul Revere's ride. It was very interesting, and then I took the bus back. Taking the bus by itself wasn't too bad. The only problem is, is the type of people you might encounter while you're on it. Even the Greyhound bus here, if you get on it here, you might be getting, getting on it with some people who just got out of prison. So that's the type of people you might have to deal with on the bus. The other time I took the bus, I left from Childress, and I just took the bus to, to Denton, Texas. And once I got to Denton, I hopped on the dart rail and took the dart rail to the airport. That way, I didn't have to drive at all. I kept my car at the house, and which is kind of a good for safety. If people see a, a car in the driveway, they're least likely to try to break into that house. And so that's the reason I did it that way, and... I uh, had all of my transportation covered with the bus and the airport. Anyhow, inside of your packet, you're going to see a paper that looks like this. Vacation Budget Project. Go ahead and read this information up here at the top. Finding the location of your favorite vacation destination. And I just created what is called an itinerary. An itinerary is just a, a basically a daily plan of what I plan on doing. So this is Mr. Craig's 10-day vacation plan to the Oregon coast and Alaska. No, I'm not going to be doing this for real. This is just an example to give you an idea of what you need to be doing. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drive from Childress to Portland, Oregon. And so when I get on my Google Maps website... Right up here it says directions. So I'm going to go from Childress, Texas to Portland, Oregon. Now notice it says one day and two hours. Well, there's 24 hours in one day, so plus two more hours. This is going to be a 26-hour trip driving from Childress, Texas to Portland, Oregon, and here is the suggested route that they suggest I take. Now, I'm not going to be driving all 26 hours straight through. I'm just going to try to break this up into different days. So when I leave Childress, I cut across the Texas Panhandle, and I go up through Colorado, and after driving for about 10 hours, I'm going to end up in Laramie, Wyoming. It's on here somewhere. 
There's Laramie. And this is going to be about a 10 hour trip. If I just type in Childress, Texas to Laramie, it tells me it's about a 10 hour and 6 minute trip. Well, 10 hours is enough driving for one day. So once I get to Laramie, I think I'm going to stop and I'm going to look for a hotel. So I'm going to go to this booking.com website and I'm going to type in that I'm going to Laramie, Wyoming. Oh, let's check in. I don't know. Let's check in on the Sunday night. And check out Monday morning. There's just one adult. And as you guys plan this trip, plan it with just yourself, just so that you can get an idea how much it's going to cost before you start taking the whole family with you. Now the Hilton Garden Inn, $139 a night. I'm not looking for anything fancy, so let's see. The Days Inn is $74 a night. Motel 8 is $66 a night. I just want something. I'm just going to go ahead and stay at the Motel 8 in Laramie for $66 a night. Now the prices are going to change all the time. And I think in my example... The last time I looked, I'm staying at the Super 8 for $79 a night. So I figured out the gas is going to cost me about $50 for the day. And notice what it says. I can go about 400 plus miles on a tank of gas. And right now the gas prices are kind of cheap. Actually, my car will go farther than 400 miles or even 500 miles on a tank of gas. But I'm going to go ahead and plan on $50 gas. I'm going to be spending most of my time on the road, so I'm just going to be grabbing some fast food or stopping at a convenience store, spending no more than $30 on food that day. And then the lodging is $79 plus tax. On day two, I'm going to leave Laramie, and I'm going to travel another 10 hours to Ontario, Oregon. Uh, gas, another $50. Food, another $30. Lodging. If I go back, to my booking.com webpage. Now folks, make sure you're not actually buying anything. You don't need to be trying to put in credit card information. That's just going to get you in, in trouble. But you can search and get an idea as to how much these things are going to cost. So now I'm going to try Ontario, Oregon. I'm going to make it the next day. And in real life, I can go ahead and set up all of this, make reservations, and have everything saved for me. I'm going to be staying at the Quality Inn. Breakfast is included, so I can save myself a little bit of money for $72 a night. So on my itinerary, that's exactly what it shows. Lodging is $72 a night plus tax at the Quality Inn in Ontario. Day three, I'm going to leave Ontario, Oregon about 9 o'clock and travel six hours to Portland, Oregon. Uh, I have actually taken this exact trip before and I tell you, this is a beautiful drive once you get into Oregon and you follow that Columbia River all the way to, into Oregon. Talk about a river. It is huge. A beautiful, beautiful trip. You get to see the Multnomah Waterfall and everything. Anyhow, since I'm only traveling six hours, I'll be spending less money on gas. I'm going to go ahead and keep my food budget about the same. But it now notice it says airline ticket for $779 because once I get to Portland, I want to hop on a plane and fly to Kodiak, Alaska. This is where the Expedia travel website, if you're wanting to fly someplace, and some of you folks who gave me destinations, your only choice is to fly to some of those destinations. But you can't fly out of Childers, Texas. 
you're going to have to drive to Amarillo or you're going to have to drive to Dallas or you're going to have to drive somewhere to catch that plane. So make sure that you're uh, putting that gas money to drive to the airport in your budget someplace. So I am going to go from Portland, Oregon and I'm going to go to Kodiak, Alaska. I'm departing on the 30th and I'm going to stay for three days so one two three we'll come back on a Saturday just one adult let's search this is a round trip Now these prices are actually a little bit lower than what I looked at last time. What I looked at last time, it was going to cost me $779. Now depending on the dates that you fly, it's going to, the prices are going to be changing, okay? So pick a, pick a price. This is leaving at 10.30 p.m., showing up at 6.53 p.m., so that means I'm actually going to sleep on the plane. That's going to save me some hotel money, but I leave at night, I show up in the morning. That's perfect. That's exactly what I'm wanting. So if I select that, no, I haven't actually bought it. and then I have to do my return flight now depending on what I plan on doing this I can return for zero so it, the price is going to stay the same or I'm going to be spending an extra six hundred and sixty four dollars there is one stop this one's two stops but I'm going to go ahead and select this one I'll be leaving at 415 no I still haven't bought anything yet so my total price to fly from Portland to Kodiak, Alaska is $585.70. Like I said, that is cheaper than what I actually have on my budget right now. Lodging, I won't need anything. I'll sleep on the plane. So on day four, I'm now in Kodiak, Alaska. It's going to cost a little bit more money up there in Alaska, so I'm going to plan on $50 for food. And then uh, I've got $482 for three nights at the Quality Inn in Kodiak, Alaska. Once again, I can go to mybooking.com. Type in Kodiak, Alaska. I think I'm going to be there Wednesday. And I'm going to be leaving Saturday morning. Just one adult. Let's run a search. Now things are a little bit more expensive up there in Kodiak. So there's my $482 at the Quality Inn for three nights. So I know to budget that much money. I do want to have some money to go see things while I'm in Kodiak and to buy some souvenirs, so I'll plan $50 for that. Day 5, I'm still in Kodiak. Uh, $50 for food. My lodging's already been paid. And I'm going to spend a little bit more money on attractions and souvenirs. My last day in Kodiak, I'm going to see about taking a tour. Maybe go down to the harbor, hop on a boat, and float around some of the nearby islands in Kodiak, uh, in Alaska, the Aleutian Island chain. I'm going to plan $200 for that. Then on day 7, I'm going to fly back to Portland. 
Now, my car has been parked at the airport parking lot, and they charge $24 a day since I've been away three days. I know I'm going to have to pay $72 just to get my car out of the parking lot. So make sure to budget money for that. I'm not traveling very far, so I'm only going to spend about $10 in gas, and my food is going to be about $30 for the day. And I'm going to travel to uh, Tillamook, Oregon. Uh, it's just a nice, small little town. But part of the reason why I'm going to Tillamook is I really like Tillamook ice cream. And there's no better thing to do than to take a tour of the Tillamook ice cream plant and eat some free ice cream as I'm leaving. So, and the hotels here are kind of expensive. I'm planning $197 uh, to stay at a hotel there in Tillamook. And yes, I used the booking.com to come up with that. Day 8, I'm going to leave Tillamook, and I'm going to travel to Gold Beach, Oregon. So my gas is going to be about $30, because $30, I'm only doing 6 hours. My food's going to be just about 20 basically just breakfast and dinner for this one. Uh, because during lunchtime, I'm going to be t on a jet boat. And they uh, charge me $70 for an 80-mile uh, jet boat adventure trip up the Rogue River. I've done this before also. This is quite a bit of fun. Type in Jerry's Jet Boats. You can either do a 64 mile trip, an 80 mile trip, and a 104 mile trip. The Rogue River has a lot of white water, a lot of rapids to it. Part of the reason why it's called Rogue, because it's wild. You just hop on one of these cool little boats right here and take that round trip up the water and back again. Better be ready to get wet because there's no way to avoid it. Pretty fun little thing. I always try to try it. I always try to go here anytime I'm up in Oregon because I think it's just so much fun. And then after we get done with that, I'll just head to a hotel, $110 a night at the Wild Chinook Inn. The next day, I've got a long trip back. I've got a 14-hour drive to Salt Lake City, and then a 15-hour drive from Salt Lake City back to Childress. Now, the paper I want you guys to focus on is this one. Write down your name, where you plan on going, how much money total are you going to be spending for gas? I'll just have to go back, look at my itinerary, and add up all my gas money. How much do you plan on spending for food, for lodging, for airline tickets, if you plan on flying? Some of your vacation destinations, you may not need airline tickets. If you're taking a bus, you won't have to worry about gas. Now, in your paper packet, I have this paper filled out for you already based on my trip. But what I want you guys to do now is to fill out this paper, and it's on the back of the one that I did. I want you guys to fill out a paper, fill, fill, fill out a budget for your trip. But the first thing you need to do is figure out where you want to go and how you're going to get there and then when, where are you going to stay, and what are you going to do when you get there. So once you have a destination figured out, do the same thing. Go to Google Maps, and just imagine you are now old enough to drive, and you might drive to that destination. Now some of you folks may not be able to drive to a destination. Some people told me they wanted to go visit Tokyo, Japan. That's fine. Uh, you're going to have to drive to an airport and then fly to Tokyo, Japan. There's no way you can drive to Japan. It's an island. So uh, let's not go overboard with this either by trying to take along mom, dad, and all your brothers and sisters. This budget is just for you. Now, if you want to go ahead and do just one other person, that's fine, but Let's not be coming up with budgets that's going to cost you $25,000 for a vacation because not very few people have that much money. 
just to spend for a vacation. I want you to come up with an itinerary. So you're going to have to type a schedule, kind of like what Mr. Craig is showing you right now. That's why it's taken, that's why I'm giving you two weeks to do this project. You need to type up an itinerary. Day one, what are you going to do? Day two, what's your plan? Day three, what's your plan? Now, my plan was just a 10-day vacation. Now, notice those last two days, I'm doing a lot of driving. I'm driving a 14-hour drive to Salt Lake City and then a 15-hour drive back to Childress. I know I can do that. I'm just by myself. But let's suppose I just get too tired and I can't make it back to Childress on this day. Well, I, I have $250 budgeted for an extra day if I need to take another extra day because of all this driving that I'm doing. It is going to take quite a bit, but... I, I know I can do it because I've done this before, except for going, the, except for the part with going to Alaska. So type up an itinerary, print it out, and then staple it to your budget that you have prepared. And then whenever you're supposed to return this packet, really this is the only paper I want back. Everything else inside of that packet is just something for you to do. Take your time. There's no reason to rush through this. Uh, research the city. If you want to go to New York, New York, well then where, what places do you want to visit in New York? So you're going to have to do a little internet research. Now you folks that are just doing the paper packet, if you're watching the video and you have no way of getting on the internet, yes, this is going to be kind of hard for you to do. Uh, just sit down with your parents and see if you can figure out something. Let's honestly try to make an effort on this. This is something you guys will definitely be doing during your adult years. You need to make a plan on how you're going to spend the money. And be careful about saying, I'll just you put use my credit card for all this. Well, I know my final budget was $3,500 and something dollars. Or $3,300, somewhere around there. If I'm going to put all that on my credit card, that means I'm going to pay back at least $4,000. Well, why in the world am I paying $4,000 for something that only costs $3,300 to begin with? So, let's be careful about using credit cards for everything. We're going to try to make this a cash trip. How much cash do you need? I know what I want to do. I know how much money it's going to take for me to do all this because I've done my research. So now I know how much money to plan for this dream vacation. Now, once again, am I actually going to do this? No. Uh, I haven't even thought about where to go for this, for my vacation this summer yet, because I don't know what's going to be open and what's going to be closed. Uh, some of you folks mentioned that you want to go to Disneyland. You go ahead and plan it like Disneyland was open even though right now I think it's closed because of the coronavirus. But go ahead and plan like it's open. How much money is it going to cost you to get there? Uh, where are you going to stay? How much money is it going to cost for you to get inside? What about souvenirs? If you're wanting to go to Tokyo, Japan, okay, you're going to have to drive to an airport. You're going to have to fly to Tokyo. You're going to have to stay in a hotel. I'm sure you're going to want some souvenirs. While you're there, I'm sure there's going to be certain places you want to visit. Not everything's going to be free. Do some research. This is meant to be a fun activity. Like I said, we would be spending an, uh, at least an entire week in class trying this. I'd be there to help you and walk you through it. But since I'm not there, I need you guys to put in more effort and get your parents to help you. Maybe your parents have some ideas. Maybe you can plan, on a plan a vacation for your parents. I want you guys to focus on learning to make budgets. It's never too late to learn how to spend the money that you plan on making and to spend it wisely. Let's have some fun with this. 
Now, I will not be on my computer every single moment, so when you send an, in an email to ask me a question, I might take me a while to get back to you, but I promise if you ask me a question, I will respond. All right, the vacation budget project, type up an itinerary, and then attach it to this budget paper right here. And you have two weeks until May 14th. All right. Uh, I don't know what else to tell you. Hopefully you guys are watching videos. And hopefully this is something that's going to be fun. I know you're going to be using it as an adult. So let's try to do this project seriously. Not just write down a whole bunch of numbers and don't try to convince me that you're going to only spend $20 in gas to drive from here to Disney World. I know that's not going to happen. We need to be a little bit smarter than that. Like I showed you, I was able to do $400 uh, for one tank of gas in my car, 400 miles for one tank of gas in my car. And it takes about 20 bucks to fill up my car right now at the current gas prices. So that's why I'm planning $50 because I know I'll be traveling more than 400 miles to get from Childress to Laramie. All right, folks. Have some fun with this project. And I don't know if I'm going to see you guys again, but I sure do miss y'all. Haven't seen y'all since spring break. It's been too long already. Hopefully I'll be able to see y'all sometime. Uh, there is some very important information inside the paper packet uh, regarding an end-of-the-year activity. Uh, since we can't walk the hallways, we're going to try something different. That information is in the paper packet. So pick up a paper packet no matter what. It's got more stuff for you to, to know about than, than just this. I'm not sure if today's going to be the day that you can also pick up your, your bag of stuff, but I guess you can just ask that question, all of that locker stuff. You can ask that question when you go pick up your paper packet to find out when you need to come back to do that. All right, that's all I got to say. If you have questions, send me an email. Try to have some fun with this. Do some research. Just be careful not to buy anything because I sure hate to have y'all grounded for the next two months. Have fun. Goodbye.